Hi everyone, it's Mr. Barnes. Welcome back to the Population and Transition Unit. This is the third and final installment of the subtopic Population Change. Today I'm going to talk about population momentum and population projections. And I'm specifically going to explain population momentum. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to do that as well. Before we get into population momentum though, we need to first understand uh, how countries transition in their demographic makeup. So this here is a model that is loosely based on the uh, experience of England in the late 1700s and still continuing to today. It basically states that countries go through uh, stages of transition. So stage one, two, three, four, and five. And all countries will eventually follow the demographic transition model theoretically. And so if we look here at the y-axis, we see births increasing and deaths increasing from bottom to top per thousand in the population. And we see time increasing from left to right along the x-axis. The pink line indicates birth rate, the, the blue line indicates death rate, and the red line indicates total population. So if we look at stage one countries, um, birth rates and death rates are quite high and therefore the population remains low. No countries are currently in stage one. All countries have pretty much uh, developed enough to move away from stage one and into stage two. If we look at stage two, death rate we notice declines. Birth rate remains pretty much the same, still quite high. And then Everything in between here, when there's an excess of births over deaths, we consider that natural increase. So we will call it natural increase rate. That means that the population is going to increase because there are more people being born than there are dying. So the, the equation to, to figure out natural increase rate is crude birth rate minus crude death rate. And that'll give you the actual rate of natural increase, so natural increase rate. When countries transition from stage two to three, birth rates finally begin to fall, which is, is trying to catch up to death rate. Death rate continues to drop, but population, you can see, increases because of the excess of births over deaths. So that's, again, natural increase all in here. All right, what we're going to study today, though, is what we see between stage three and stage four, and that's an increase in population, although the birth rates and death rates are quite low. So the question that demographers ask themselves is, why is population continuing to increase even though uh, birth rate and death rate are pretty much the same? If we notice here in stage one, birth rate and death rate are the same, they're high, but they're the same, population is, is pretty stagnant. It doesn't change much, but yet, uh, population is going to still increase even though birth rates and death rates are quite low here in stage four. And so um, that's obviously due to population momentum. Just a, a quick uh, rundown on stage five. This is a declining, uh, a, a declining population. You can see this is actually negative growth because there are more deaths than births and so population is, is going to, to decline here. So let's get back to uh, what we were talking about in stage four, and that's population momentum. So population momentum, if we look at uh, the population pyramid of China in 1990, we all know that China implemented a, its famous one-child policy, and that was in 1978. And so uh, if you look here about 12 years ago, um, these people, you can see, were having quite a few children, birth rate was increasing, and then it starts to decline because of um, the one-child policy. However, China's population is continuing to, to grow. And why is that? Again, it's because of population momentum. The easiest way that I can explain this is with the analogy of a car. When you're driving at, let's say, 100 kilometers an hour and you slam on your brakes, your momentum will carry you forward. You're not going to just stop on a dime. And so you can see this car slammed on its brakes and you can see the skid marks. It's, the momentum has carried it forward. Well, what does that mean for population? 
basically, if we look at um, fertility, you can see that fertility has dropped in China after the one-child policy, and it's gone down to below two children per, per female. However, if we look, this is 1980, 1980 here, China's population is continuing to grow. And again, that's because of population momentum. Um, when there are an excess of births over deaths and a large amount of people in the childbearing years, even though birth rate is declining and fertility is declining, the population will continue to grow because of the excess of births over deaths and the, the people in their childbearing years. If we look at the uh, population pyramid for China changing from 1990 to 2011, we can see that the population is continuing to grow because of all the people in the childbearing years, even though, we look right here, birth rate is declining. So birth rate's going down, but yet the population is still increasing. And again, that's population momentum. So what does this mean for population projections? A population projection, of course, is um, basically a, a theorized uh, population based on statistics and other information from a country. Well, population momentum basically just needs to be considered when making projections, and that is the impact that it has on population projections. So if we look here, demographers uh, theorize that China's population will actually go below India's population. India will overtake China as the most populous country in the world by 2025. And that's because it's not going to decline uh, immediately, even though fertility is below the replacement level, um, because of population momentum. So they are predicting not until 2025. It's not, you know, 2012 in which it's going to happen. There's going to be some lag first, uh, like we saw in the, in the graph uh, previous. Here again is a population projection. This is fertility rates in the Philippines. Uh, 2003, so this is po total population in the Philippines. Um, even though it's, it's not a projection, we can still gather some information from this. Basically, the fertility rate in the Philippines is right around 3.1 children per family in uh, 2011. So uh, even, even the prediction made in 1990, this is probably from 1990, uh, is is pretty accurate, although it's on the it's on the high side. Um, if we were to make another prediction, we could probably say that from here it's going to do something like that: high, medium, and low. So, what we're looking at is the decline in fertility, but yet the increase in population. So, even though fertility is going down, there are fewer children being born. There is a large amount of people. Um, in their childbearing years already due to high fertility in the past. And that actually increases population uh, even though fertility is declining. So again, um, if we look at population momentum and its uh, impact on population projections, even if the uh, fertility, this is again a population projection for total population from the Population Reference Bureau, uh, up to 2,125, and this is uh, fertility over here with po po population size over here. Um, even if the uh, fertility rate makes it to 2.1, which is the replacement level, 2.1 children per woman, we can see that the population won't level off until about 2,075. So um, the, the Population Reference Bureau, due to population momentum, has said that uh, it will still take a while for the, the population to level off at that, uh, at that fertility level. And they say that if uh, worst case scenario, high fertility, uh, population will, will dramatically increase. And let's say for example, um, we get to 2100 and fertility is around here. Um, the, the next projection will be again, a continuation of that line, maybe something here or something here. It won't be a decline like this because um, of population momentum. All the people in the uh, childbearing years will, will keep the population um, to, uh, growing. So um, this is just a quick rundown about population momentum and uh, its impact on population projections. I hope 
you uh, are able to maybe explain population momentum and uh, its impact on population projections a little bit better now. So thanks.